Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Friday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today is going to be a special edition of our Gospel Truth. I'm going to do something a little different, and I'm going to comment on current events. And I have to state that we are, we are making these programs. I think the date today is the 17th of December, 2012. And, of course, you're seeing this in, uh, I, I think it's the very 1st of February. And so it's not real timely the way that it used to be. But, you know, we aren't like your evening news that is broadcasting via satellite. We tape these programs and send them out. And so this is just the reality of what it is. But on our program yesterday, <coughs> excuse me, I was referring to the shootings that took place in Newtown, Connecticut on the 14th of December, 2012. And I feel like it's important to uh, bring some things out in Scripture about this. Let me first of all say that I do not claim to have all of the answers on anything. I'm not a politician, and this is bringing up a lot of social issues and stuff that I'm not qualified to deal with, and it's not my intent to deal with it. But first of all, you know, we were all shocked and saddened by what happened, and you just wonder how could something like this happen. And one of the things that I think that really comes up in tragedies like this is that people wonder, how did this happen? How could this happen? Because it, it shakes us to our core. It takes away our sense of security. We feel like things like this should not be happening. And when something like this happens, of course, we grieve with the people that have experienced the hurt and loss themselves, and we pray for them and pray that God will minister to them. But one of the things that happens is we want to say, how can we fix this? What caused it? How can we fix it? so that we don't have to go through the rest of our life feeling like something like this is in our future. We want to fix this. We want to get over it so that we can approach our future with some sense of security. You see, the exact same thing happened after 9-11. The same thing happened after Hurricane Sandy and Hurricane Katrina and all of these kind of things. People want to find out what caused this, fix a blame, change the situation and go forward so that we don't have to live with this uncertainty. Well, let me first of all say that, you know what, we live in a fallen world, and it is dangerous out there. And I think that most of the time people don't realize how dangerous things are and that we are in a fallen world, and we are never going to experience heaven here on this earth the way that God created it to be. God created a perfect world that didn't have all of this tragedy and all of this heartbreak and sorrow, but mankind chose on our own to live our own way, and we are the ones that have unleashed the devil on this earth, and we live now in a fallen world, and I'm telling you, you need to recognize that life is serious. And even though... You know, our society today has gotten to where it is so into entertainment and we have all of these diversions and people have created these alternate realities and they just think that nothing bad's ever going to happen to them. That is not realistic. So one of the things that needs to happen every time there is some kind of a tragedy is that we, it needs to kind of jar us back and bring us back to reality and realize that we have an enemy, the devil, that's out there going about seeking whom he may devour. That's in 1 Peter chapter 5. And Satan is out to destroy every single person's life that he possibly can. And we need to live with the seriousness and recognize that we, there is no time that we can just coast and put our guard down. That we are fighting evil. And this leads me to another point, And that is that when tragedy happens, you often have people ascribe this to God, the sovereignty of God. Nothing could happen but what he allows it. Now, when it came to 9-11 and the attacks against the United States, did you know I heard this constantly, nearly from every single Christian voice? They all said that this was God's judgment on America for taking prayer out of the schools, for us walking away from standards of morality, and they blamed God 
for these acts of terror that were done. And I went on television and started proclaiming that no, God didn't do it. Now, God, of course, could intervene. He could stop things, but He does not move in our life without our consent and cooperation. And America has been systematically walking away from God and saying, we don't want you in our life. We don't want your standards of morality. And they turn their back on God. And in a sense, we tied the hands of God. We have not invited and welcomed God to participate in our nation. And so I believe that the reason that 9-11 happened in these terrorist attacks wasn't that God sent it. God didn't kill thousands of people. God did not inspire people to fly planes into buildings. God didn't do it. God wanted to intervene, but he was limited in what he could do because people had systematically been saying, get away from us, turn away from us. We rejected him and his standards of morality. So at 9-11... Nearly everybody attributed that to God, nearly all Christian leaders. And I was sitting there saying, no, God didn't do it, nor did he allow it. We allowed it. God allows what we allow. God flows through us. But I am glad to say, and I want to point this out, because I have listened to quite a bit of television coverage about what happened in Connecticut, and I have yet to hear one single person attribute this to God. And I'm sure that there's some that will because this doctrine of sovereignty and that nothing can happen but what God allows it, it is so embedded in our religious culture. I'm sure somebody has done it, but I haven't heard it. And I've heard some religious people stand and speak, and without exception, everyone has said this was pure evil. I think it was the governor of Connecticut said evil visited us today. And I am glad to hear that. God did not do this. God did not inspire that man to kill his mother while she was laying in bed and then go kill 26 people. Six of them were adults, but 20 of them were innocent, totally innocent children. God did not inspire that man to do it. And I tell you, for those who preach that nothing can happen but what God wills it or allows it, then this instance right here ought to make a point that if you believe that, then you are saying God inspired this man to kill these innocent children. And I tell you, I, that is not the God that I know, and I do not represent that God at all. God doesn't control us like that. I don't know all of the reasons behind why the shooter did what he did, but based on this exact teaching that I've been giving here on our programs, you have to conceive things on the inside. You have to see it on the inside before you see it on the outside. And I don't know the particulars. I don't know the details. But I can guarantee you that this shooter somewhere has sat down and he had some hurt, some bitterness, something going on on the inside of him. And he responded to it incorrectly. And in his imagination, he has seen, he saw himself doing what he did. He did not just wake up and snap and go do this. He planned this. He saw it. And I, I don't have the physical evidence to prove that, but from based on the Word of God, I can guarantee you that this is how things happen. You can't go anywhere in your actions that you haven't already been in your mind. And so this brings up a number of things. One of them is that we've got a culture of violence where on our movies and shows... Violence is just, I mean, it's rampant. And these uh, games that they have, and I did hear somebody say that this shooter in Connecticut was a gamer, and he played a lot of games. And, you know, the games are just violent. I've seen some of them, and I mean, it is gratuitous violence. It is just, it's bad. And I can guarantee you, anybody who plays that kind of stuff over and over and over, in their heart, in their mind, and in their imagination, they have gone someplace that God never intended for any of us to go. So you know what? There's things that need to change. We, I believe, ought to make some statements and some stands against all of the violence and stuff going on. And, you know, by the time you watch this program, it's going to be over a month later. I'm sure that people will have brought up gun control. They're going to bring up uh, ways that we could better defend our schools and lock them down, and they're going to start doing all of these things. And to a degree, I think that there is benefit in these physical, natural things that can be done. 
I think that government can impede and make it harder for evil to have access to our children and to do these things. And so I'm sure there's things in the natural that need to be done. But here's the real point that I was wanting to make and the reason I wanted to devote an entire television program to it is I believe that this was just pure evil. This isn't just physical. It's not just natural. And we can't have a natural response to this. This was demonic. You know, here's a passage of Scripture in Ephesians chapter 6. It says in verse 11, it says, Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. This is a very clear statement from Scripture that it's not just a physical battle. There is a spiritual battle waging. And you know, I've seen some coverage of this shooting in Connecticut, and I was just shocked. I was shocked to hear our president using Scripture when he addressed the people. I was as shocked at some of the news reporters and how they were talking about prayer. And, and again, I'm aware that in a crisis situation, people get very God-conscious, and by this time... It may have worn off and people may be, you know, totally different. But I was pleasantly surprised with some of these news anchors, one of them in particular that I wouldn't have ever have figured this coming from. He was saying that he had covered lots of things and he said this was the most pure evil he had ever seen. And he says, I'm not really a religious person, but this was the devil. He said this was demonic the way that things were done. Some of these children shot up to 11 times. You know, I'm, I was pleasantly surprised to see that people even acknowledge that. But the truth is, this isn't just something physical, natural. Again, there's things in the natural that probably ought to be done. We need to adjust to the reality of the world we live in. I'm not saying that we just, you know, take all the locks off the doors, that you make easy access. No, there's things that we need to do to protect ourselves. But here's what I am trying to say, is that the only sure cure for this isn't building fortresses. It's not more gun control. It's not all of these other things. It's not having our children living under so much protection that they can't breathe and that we lose all of our freedoms. The real answer to this is to change the hearts of people with the gospel because this was pure evil. And if someone had reached this young man that did these things with the gospel, who knows? It could have changed his heart. I can truthfully say this. Jesus said that love works no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. If a person receives the love of God, a person whose heart is under the influence of the love of God would never go and work ill towards his neighbor. That certainly includes killing innocent children in school. This was a heart that was completely sealed off from the love of God. Now, I don't know if he was exposed to it at one time and somebody tried to reach him and he of his own free will made a choice and went against it. I don't know any of the details, but I can guarantee you that at the time he did what he did this was a heart that was not under the influence of God. This was under the influence of pure evil. It's demonic. And if, if what I'm saying is true, and what the scriptures say, that we aren't wrestling against flesh and blood, but we're wrestling against principalities and powers, if that be true, you can't build a, fil a fortress strong enough to keep evil out. I mean, you could make your schools to where they're just on total lockdown, but then the kids still have to get to and from school. If a person is just full of evil, then they could shoot children as they leave school or as they come to school, or they could find some other way to do it in some kind of an assembly, in a sporting event, and on and on and on you go. I'm not saying that we shouldn't do things in the natural, but this is a spiritual problem, and the only sure cure to this is a spiritual response. And some people may think, well, man, that's totally impractical. But you know what? This is the only answer that is practical. 
There was a time in the history of the United States when we had more guns. I mean, back when America was young, everybody nearly brought a gun to school with them, and you didn't see these kind of things happen. There were more guns, there were less controls, less security, and less of these kind of inc incidents. You know why? Because people's hearts were different. For one thing, there was a fear of God on the inside of people. Even the people who were living an ungodly life knew that there was a God, and they knew that someday they were going to be held accountable for their actions. And so if they went and robbed somebody or shot somebody or did something, they wouldn't kill themselves thinking that somehow they had escaped judgment because they knew that they would be ushered into an eternity where they would be instantly held accountable for their actions. So they wouldn't just commit suicide thinking that I can get away with whatever I want to do. But now we have had God so systematically removed from our society that there are a lot of people that don't believe there is life after this life. They don't believe in heaven and hell. And so they believe that they can go commit any atrocity that they want to and commit suicide and they've avoided all judgment. Man, I, I can guarantee you this shooter in Connecticut knows differently now. And see, we have allowed this to happen in our society. There is not the same fear of God. There is not the same knowledge of God. And we, the answer to this lies within the church. It's the gospel. It's the power of God. The gospel is the power of God to change people's hearts. And every time we allow our nation... You know, in the United States, morality is not illegal. But immorality is. We have legalized immorality. We have taken, we have systematically countered God's standards of right and wrong. Like I heard Mike Huckabee say this. Somebody said, there ought to be a law against this. He says, there is. Thou shalt not kill. But we have been systematically trying to get the Ten Commandments out of our, uh, you know, political uh, public life. It needs to be in our public life. When it was dominating our public life and when people had standards of morality, things like this didn't happen. This isn't just a, a technical thing about we need more security in the schools, we need more of this and this and this and all of these physical natural things. It is an indication of a spiritual condition that is getting out of hand because we are systematically removing God from our public consciousness. Even people who didn't have a personal relationship with God before were at least under the influence of the gospel. They had many of the same values and concepts that they held dear, and it held this evil in check. We have been systematically trying to push all consciousness of God, all morality away, been saying that things that are absolutely wrong are right. When you sit here and you kill over 53 million babies in their mother's womb, you're sending a message to people that life isn't sacred, not life in itself. We, we can determine which life is good. They now are doing tests and some, some babies are being aborted based on whether they're male or female because they don't like the gender. That's just nothing but murder. And once you allow things like that into a culture, you open up a door to evil that allows things like this to come in. And if we are going to ever effectively change this, we've got to change the hearts of people with the gospel. You can't build enough fortresses. You can't do enough in the natural. You know, there was a man, I mentioned this on our program yesterday, but it's appropriate, so I'm going to mention it again. But Daryl Scott, the father of Rachel Scott, one of the girls killed in the Columbine shootings in 2000, or excuse me, is 1999. Um, he spoke, and I heard him say that he and a group of people have been going into schools and they've now spoken to over 3 million students in the United States. There are three school shootings that they know of that have been averted because of their intervention, and there's over 500 students that were going to commit suicide that have changed their mind because of the things that they shared. Now, that's the most powerful thing that we have to do right there, is to go in and impact the values of people, and the gospel is the only thing that is qualified to be able to do that. You know, when you see something like this happen, people think, well, man, look at the evil, and they see the evil, and they think, where was God? 
God was in those six teachers that threw themselves at this man and tried to stop him and he killed them. God was in the janitor that walked down the hall warning everybody that there was a shooter in the building. God was in these teachers that put their life at risk and locked their children in a room and refused to allow the gunman access to it. God was in the first responders that came and went in not knowing if they would face uh, death themselves. God was in a lot of people. There was a lot of good things. This man, I heard a report that he had hundreds and hundreds of rounds of ammunition that he intended on using and he never used. It could have been much worse, much, much worse. God was in people and he was coming to restrain this, but God only flows through us. He doesn't move without us. And the reason that this even happened in the first place is because we've allowed influences of ungodliness. We have allowed the darkness to take over in our society and we have to return back to Christian moral standards publicly. The church should be advocating this. We ought to be taking a stand against immorality and if we were doing that on the public scale, not just inside of our churches, but I mean we need to get out and begin to promote godly values and stand against evil. Every time you stand against evil, you are putting things like what happened in Connecticut in check. There's absolutely no way to tell how much evil has been stopped. You know, I think of some good friends of mine, uh, Derry and Karen Jolly, who have a ministry in Nicaragua, and I support a lot of their children, and they have started these schools, and they've built houses, and they've preached the gospel, and they have their first children that have graduated from their K through 12th grade, and they are now entering into college in Nicaragua. What tragedy was averted by them being there to help these kids that couldn't have gone to school otherwise? And now that they're entering into college and they're going to become influential and leaders, what kind of benefit could that make to that nation? You know, I know that in Uganda, we have people on the ground in Uganda that have made a huge impact, over 500,000 people going through our materials on a, on a monthly basis. I actually got to meet with the president and the first lady of Uganda, and the impact that our Bible college students are making on that nation is powerful. And just within the last month, President Museveni, the president of Uganda, repented of his personal sins and of the sins of the nation and dedicated the nation of Uganda to the Lord. Now, I know that there were other influences besides just ours, but you know what? We were a part of it, and who knows what that could have averted. At one time, Idi Amin killed hundreds of thousands of people. Something like that could have happened again. But what I'm saying is that we can do things. And it's more than just building fortresses. It's more than just these natural things. The best thing that the body of Christ can do is take a stand for morality. Stand up. And as we change hearts, it can change a nation. Every one of you could be influencing someone who Satan has marked to do something like this person did in Connecticut. You know what? You need to go out and let your light shine. We are the salt of the earth, and praise God, we've got to get out of the salt shaker. You know, we've got a testimony about a, uh, some children that were healed of the exact same uh, mental disorder that this shooter in Connecticut had. If you'll listen, our announcer can give you that information on our website. I encourage you to go uh, check that out and join me again tomorrow as we continue the gospel truth. Who would have thought this young couple in England would have two sons with these debilitating conditions? Discover how the message of God's unconditional love and grace led the McDermott's down the road to total and complete healing and restoration. Log on to awmi.net. Look to the left and click on Ministry News. Then look to the right and click on Healing Testimonies. Andrew's complete teaching titled The Power of Hope was recorded live at a recent conference. It's available on either CD or DVD. Or you can get the DVD as seen on TV. Each is available for 16 pounds. This series is also available for audio download absolutely free on our website. Go to awme.net, click on Resources at the top of the page, and then MP3 Teachings. 
The third audio teaching in today's series is titled, Developing Your Hope. It's available for three pounds when you write or call, but if you're simply unable to afford it, Andrew and his partners will send this third CD free of charge. We'd like to remind you that we're offering Andrew's latest book titled, Christian Philosophy for nine pounds 99. Contact us today to get your copy. You can use your credit card to order resources through our website at awme.net. While you're there, you can discover more product details and download additional free resources. Or you can order through our helpline Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time. Our helpline number is 01922 473 300. When calling from outside the UK, you must dial your international calling code, then 44-1922-473-300. If the lines are busy, remember you can order ministry materials 24 hours a day, 7 days a week at awme.net. To write us, use the address on your screen. We hope to hear from you today. We'd like to point out Andrew's upcoming speaking schedule. Mark your calendars to come meet Andrew at one of these events. In the month of February, he'll be in Santa Clara, Anaheim, and Pasadena, California. For more details on Andrew's next meeting in your area, call our helpline or visit our website at awme.net. On today's broadcast, Andrew mentioned a shooting incident in Newtown, Connecticut. For more information and to read Andrew's complete response to this tragedy, go to awmi.net and click the Connecticut shooting link on the home page. For over 25 years, Andrew Womack has been involved with and supported our Colorado Springs Pregnancy Center and has seen the lives of many thousands of babies spared. Presently in outreach of Life Network, the Pregnancy Center offers several valuable services, ranging from free pregnancy tests to personal counseling, classes covering pregnancy to infant care, and supplies spanning from maternity wear to diapers and baby clothing. They also offer post-abortion counseling, which ministers to women who have already experienced the heartache of abortion. Andrew has since retired from the Board of Directors, but continues to support the Colorado Springs Pregnancy Centers, which now have two offices in Colorado Springs, as well as a mobile pregnancy center. If you'd like more information, please visit elifenetwork.com or cspregnancycenter.com.